<laughs> anyway, let's get started. I've got work to do today, so no, uh, no dallying. I gotta try to, I've gotta get all the, I've gotta get the apron and the cup completed. I've gotta get his little lapel pin in here. I wanna try to work up the Bible. Um, and I wanna do that by lunch and maybe even before lunch. So time to get cracked. Basically, I'm picking up exactly where I left off. I did this yesterday. I'm just gonna pull up in here and then I'll work some of this in here and then work my way back down into all the stuff that I put in yesterday is now dry. So I'll be able to work into this and finish this. So like I said, if I can get this done, if I can get this done in about an hour's time by one o'clock, the Bible and the lapel pin definitely within an hour will be done. Um, we'll then break and when we come back, we'll see. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I could probably knock out today. Um, I wasn't, it wasn't really on my, um, on my radar um, yesterday when I kind of walked in, but I'm now looking at getting this thing across the finish line and I've got lots of work that's still gotta be done, lots of little things. And so at this point, I'm now starting to structure my thinking about what has to be done in order to have this painting completely finished and signed on Wednesday next week. So in order for me to do that, I've got to start moving this painting along. Um, it's not moving fast enough right now um, for me to hit that deadline. And it's, it's not so much that there's a lot of work. It's more a matter of that some of these things have to dry before I can work back over them. So if I do some, if I need to have something dry in order to glaze it next week, it's got to be done this week, not next week. So I've got to kind of line all of that up. So again, at this point, I'm now starting to structure my structure my schedule to account for all of that. can't be so lax with what I get done and what I don't get done in a given day now. This now needs to be, I need to be on a schedule. Um, and again, like it's not really mattered up until now, but I don't want this dragging on into June. This, this painting has taken, it's taken enough of my time. Um, as much as I, I'm enjoying myself, it does need to get done so that it can be delivered. So again, most of this work that I'm going to be doing today is, it's not mindless. I don't want to give that impression. I have to be very thoughtful about what I'm doing. Um, but at the same time, it's a, a lot of it is it's repetitious. And so it's not like I'm resolving the face. I'm working into what's already here. I'm going to try not to talk to the camera very much today. I'm going to try to stay focused on what I'm doing. Um, I can answer questions without any problem, but I do want to kind of keep my face in this direction uh, to the degree that I can. Um, again, there's a lot that I can get done if I stay focused on painting. And so that's really the order of the day. I want to, I got a bunch of things that I have to get done um, by end of business tomorrow in order for this painting to be ready for, to be completed uh, Wednesday of next week. Thank you. 
And again, some of these things in here, they're gonna get glazed over and they're gonna get knocked back. They're not gonna be this bright, but if I don't bring them up at this stage, when I go in and I glaze over them, they're going to, they're really gonna fall off in a way, they won't look like, they won't look sparkly. And I wanna make sure that I retain that impression. Right? I don't need to put in a lot of specific details. I can hint at most of them, as long as a few of them that go in feel particular. Right? A lot of nothing and a little bit of something. It's all I need. And again, these, these colors, even though they are gold, um, on my palette they're gold, um, they look really kind of pale and yellow here. Um, when, I, when I glaze them, they're gonna get pushed back into this color range. But I do need to elevate the value it's not nearly as light as it looks. It's just how it relates to everything around it. Everything around it is so dark. This is one of those places where it's so important that I didn't exhaust my value range, um, that I'm not forced to use white in here in order to be to read as a, as a highlight. Again, in here, if I put the paint down and I leave a little bit of a gap between what I just put down here and what I put down here as a line, that trench feels like a recess. It feels, it, it feels like the mark I'm putting down now is on the surface. Like I've got these two things on the surface and there's this gap in between. And that's what, like I've been doing that all around here. Every place where I leave the original pass exposed, I'm getting that impression.
Again, I'm just looking to get a little bit of relief. I'm looking to get the impression of a little bit more dimension in here. If I paint everything, I won't get that. I need just a little bit, leaving a lot of what's already down exposed. This is definitely one of those times where less is more. And so this gives a little bit more relief, meaning it feels a little more three-dimensional. Just the lighter, just that it's lighter makes it pull away. But also by varying it, it makes the leaves feel like they're curved instead of being flat. Again, I don't need a lot. Remember, these aren't, they're not six inches deep. They're, you know, half a centimeter, maybe. There's really not much to them, maybe less than that. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of lift away from, away from the, the, the cup itself. And again, just this little elevated value goes a long way. Becky asked, what makes them feel curves? I missed that. Each leaf right now is flat and it has lines in it. There's no highlight on them. The highlight takes something flat and if you put a highlight on it, it curves it out, it pulls it forward. And so what I'm doing is by putting in some of these variations, like this is a great example of it, it curves the leaf from the stem in the center to the outside. Same on the other side. It curves them a little bit, or at least it gives them that impression. Like these lighter values pull forward, leaving the rest of the leaf behind. So the leaf goes from flat to three-dimensional. And again, I'm not looking for a lot of relief. Very, very small amount. Um, because this isn't three-dimensional like his nose, or like the difference between here and here, or here and here. I don't want that kind of lift. I just want a little bit. Like I'm gonna put a cast shadow underneath all of this too which is going to make it pop away from the background as well, or away from the cuff.
they can sue me. Because all the, you know, the majority of the work's done, at this point I'm just accenting it. There's not a lot to be done in the painting at this point. It is time consuming. The stuff that's being done is particular, but there's not a lot of labor left. I'm really just tying up loose ends at this point to a great degree.
person. So selectively placing this value in here helps to give me highlights inside of each of these marks. And those highlights help to explain form. Without them, all of these things are just gonna fall flat. And so I'm being careful about the value, not to elevate this too much to look like this, uh, but this is gonna get glazed and darkened later on anyway, uh, to push it back to where it belongs. So I'm not worried about it too much. Always thinking in terms of the values that I'm putting down, making sure that they make sense in the space that I'm putting them. trying to unify this pull I'm gonna leave some of this undone but I don't want it I want it to feel like it's dropping off so just a little bit less paint kind of roll it into the shadow this out yesterday. Somehow missed it. Ooh. That looks nice.
So there's some decorative elements in here. Again, just trying to hit at them. I don't want to get too particular. Um, I want to make sure that I've got enough information that it feels about right, but that I'm not going in and rendering particulars. I'm, I have to fight my own um, impulses to not do too much. My nature is to go in and do the details. And so I kind of fight my nature when I do stuff like this. <clears throat> So I'm gonna, like all this stuff that I did yesterday is dry, so I'm gonna lay in highlights into my highlights on the chains, again, helping to further move them in the direction of the intended end result. This should elevate the chain quite a bit. Should um, really help to bring the chain into focus, these little highlights. And again, I'm not just filling what I already filled yesterday, I'm selectively picking places <clears throat> where I think these highlights matter. Just going to share some of the conversation happening. Yeah. Becky said, it looks really nice, like I could reach out and feel the 3D effect. Nicholas said, yeah, I would want to put black color in those dark places in the old days. Old days equals two months ago. Yeah. Becky said, yeah, me too. I would have done it a whole different way. This did save him time, running lots here. Again, the idea with what I'm doing is that I'm splitting the labor. I'm not doing it all in one shot. And so that, it really does help. I can focus on just the highlights now. I'm not having to worry about explaining the chain or even all of the things that are bright, but just the things that jump away that are really bright. I can put those in and not worry about anything else. And they really are, they really don't amount to being that many marks. Again, I, you know, your average, your average portrait is not going to have this kind of stuff in it. Um, 
this is really, from a detail standpoint, this is like really over the top. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun when it's finished. <laughs> it's a lot of work while you're doing it, though. Uh, no doubt about that. Again. Like, you know, you can see that there's some some sense of the chains being created here, um, but eventually, meaning next week, I'm going to go in. I'm going to outline some of these chains with a little bit of violet in the glaze, and these chains are going to become like metal, just like that. Right now, I'm just putting in the lights, and so you're not seeing very much coming together yet. But you'll see, like, all of a sudden, you're going to blink and it'll be done. It's, got, it's a lot more, there's a lot more going on here than it looks like at the moment. So much more is being managed than is, than is obvious. <clears throat> and again, one of the beautiful things about layering, you have, to be, you have to be okay with the idea that the painting is in pieces for a while. But when it pulls together, it pulls together beautifully. And you know, part of it is just being patient with the painting. Like you can see as I'm working on I'm in no rush to go anywhere. I'm not, I'm not racing to get anything done. I'm just working. And, and, and I could talk about this in the program a lot. Patience is, is key. I mean, if you, if you can't be patient, you can't do this. Um, and that doesn't mean that you, you have to be patient in everything. You can go out in your car and have all the road rage incidents that you want. It's just that when you're painting, you've got you've to retain your composure and be, be in control of what you're doing. Becky is wondering if you were able to see the transfer underneath um, that design that you did on the bar that's holding the chains together. The bar that's holding the what? The chains together, right there. Uh, no, there's no transfer left. It's been gone for some time. I'm just, I'm just really winging this, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's this because I'm building into what's already down. I've had to make some some commitments along the way, and so. To some degree, I'm locked into what went down earlier. And if I did it right, then this doesn't become a battle. If I rush through it and I didn't do, I didn't do a good job of describing what's here, then it's going to be a, a fist fight to get this thing over the finish line because nothing's going to line up.
even though these chains are basically the same, like every link is the same, the light's not hitting them the same. They're turned in different directions. They're kind of like twisted. And, and so every single one of these has to be handled individually. Trina is asking, does the glaze make the metal pop? A, okay, so a glaze in and of itself doesn't do anything. It's how you apply it, right? So it's a matter of effect. So I'm going to put some darker things in here and establish when I glaze and establish edges that aren't obvious right now. I'm setting the stage for it. Um, but if I put in a dark glaze at the bottom here and define the bottoms of each of these little balls, it's going to pull away and feel very solid. Right now, the edges aren't so distinct, so the steel balls don't feel hard. Um, but they will, they'll become much more solid when I put that in. Same with the chains. Right now, they're just kind of a bunch of marks. When I put the darks in and I define some of those edges a little better, all of a sudden, these are going to feel like, like um, links. But it's not the glaze itself. It's how the glaze is applied. It's almost like the idea of, say, like chrome paint, right? So if I put down chrome paint, let's say there was chrome, chrome paint, it's highly, highly reflective, but if I put it down on a flat surface, it just looks like a mirror. In order to make it look rounded, I have to actually paint in the illusion. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm really painting in the illusion. And when I get to, when I get to the glazes, I'm going to use those to further that illusion. But the glaze in and of itself doesn't do anything that I don't tell it to do. Um, it's not like a secret sauce or anything? No, no, definitely not. These chains just time. I wanted to be able to do this faster. Mm. And again, I'm just like, I'm keeping track of the time. I, I, I do want to get through certain things today. In fact, I really have to. And so, like, even if I have to run a little bit late today, then that's what I'll do. Um, I can't leave things to go into next week um, that I want to glaze next week in order to finish the painting. But the chains, again, they're definitely, definitely taking up um, some time. You know, anytime you get into a place like this where you've got this many little details, that's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it, and you can't ignore them. I can't leave this alone and just kind of, well, I'm not going to detail that. It's part of what's going on here, so it has to be detailed to the degree of everything else. It can't just be, it can't just be brushed aside. And that, that's a real, it's a real kind of amateur move where it's like, ah, I don't really want to paint that thing. The commitment is too much. And so you don't, you don't do it to the level of everything else. It kind of ruins your painting. And that also becomes habit. If you, you know, once you start cutting those corners, it becomes habit. You know, in a painting, the first thing, you, the first time you cut a corner, it's only a little thing. And then it's like, well, then something else comes up and you're like, well, I don't feel like doing that either. And well, I've already cut one corner, so what's another one? And then again and again and again, the next thing you're Picasso. No offense to Picasso. Another thing I've been doing 
in here, like on him, all of these details, I've actually been um, making them sharp. You'll see when I do the metals on the other side, they're not gonna be quite so sharp. I'm making them sharper, I'm giving, I'm giving them, I don't wanna say that I'm making them sharper, a better way of explaining is that I'm giving them more sharp edges. Um, and the sharp edges are gonna to help to separate him from the background. Um, the metals on the table are not gonna be quite so sharp. Um, because I don't want them pulling away the way I want him to. And so I'm utilizing edge in a kind of decorative way to help me separate him from what's back here. Okay, so that's one there. Frank says, super excited to see the glazing technique. Do you mix the glaze with Alkid or is it the transparency the way you need it already? No, 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 I've, I've got to put, um, it's got to have additional medium in it. It's, um, the paint comes out of the tube and it's, even though it's translucent, it's still thick. And so, you know, you put medium in it and you turn it into like a liquid. You'll see, it becomes like a, like a colored syrup. Scott Dean said, you've got an amazing eye, man. Those chains are absolutely alive. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's true, it actually really looks like if I just touch one of them, I could hear them all tinking oh. up against each other. <laughs> I, have, and I, haven't even, I haven't really defined them yet. That's gonna happen later on. Drop that when I drop that last pass in, they're really gonna come together. It's it's if you haven't seen it before, you like it's hard to explain. Like you can see, like like at each stage, it's not like I'm necessarily doing that much, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there it is. And the chains are gonna do the same thing, kind of inching them a little bit at a time. That last thing that I do is gonna be like is gonna breathe life into them. as long as I set the stage properly here. Very easy to get lost in here. Uh, I'm having to kind of bounce around a little bit to figure out where I am and come in from both sides, from the bottom, from the top. You just can you keep finding new entry points where something is obvious that I can that I can put in that will help me to make sense of everything else that's going on. Will you glaze the shadow of the row of chains also? Um, 
there's going to be a lot going on in here. It's and again, what it'll, what's going to come down to is what is necessary when I get there. Um, I have ideas about what I'm going to do um, in here. I'm planning on filling in the gaps and solidifying the shapes of the chains, the outer edge, even underneath, um, casting a shadow from here to here, from here to here, right? So, but I don't know exactly what I'll do and what is necessary and what will move the painting forward in the direction I want until I really get there. Um, I might have ideas in my head about what to do, but it really does come down to when I get there, um, the painting will be moved along further, and at that point, I'll make a decision as to what is best for the painting. But again, generally speaking, I will do everything, I'll do everything I can to, to pull this painting together. Um, I won't leave anything out that the painting needs. The thing is figuring out what the painting needs. That's really the job. I think I get to stop there on that stuff. Okay. What did I say? I wanted to have all this done by lunch, right? Mm -hmm. This and then even this. I think I'm I'm actually doing okay. I feel like I'm like moving in slow motion here. Okay, this is all done. So I've got to get this and now this. too much down here just a little bit probably at the top so remember yesterday I was talking about how I could have left this unpainted down here and just painted in the tops and let it fade away well as I put these highlights in I'm gonna treat the painting like that try to catch only the tops of these things trying to give the impression of a little bit more dimension. Becky and Nicholas are talking about um, paper towels and how much they use. Yes. Nicholas says that he thinks he uses at least half a roll per painting. That's a lot. That is a lot. It helps to fold them up. Yes, and also to not use like 
full sheets, but like get the paper towels that are half sheets. Don't crumple them. That's another thing. If you crumple them up into a ball, they don't last very long. But if you fold them as you go, you'd be surprised how long you can uh, you can work with a single sheet. You know, look, I mean, um, you know, if, if COVID's done nothing else, it's shown us that these things are not necessarily a limitless resource, right? And so be thoughtful about them. Don't be wasteful. Um, you know, when you, when, at, at, there'll be points maybe like this where you'll need something and you won't have it. Um, learn to be a little bit more thoughtful about the material. Again, it, it just requires a little bit of thought as to why the things go, why you're going through it so fast, and um, and you'll be able to figure out a way to to not use quite so much. And mind you, I'm not going to lecture anybody on on being wasteful. Uh, just to say that, like, bear in mind, like we have a scenario like now. What if you couldn't get paper towels? Like, what are you going to? Does that stop you from painting? Like, so. If you can be less wasteful, what short supply you might have at hand will last you. Patrick said he has paper towels on subscribe and saves on Amazon. <laughs> That's a way to go. Sana said she finally found the use for the roll of kitchen towels she had lying around. Not done yet, but getting to the end of it now in beginning of block three. And Trina is asking, would you ever use rags? You know what I did? But eventually you run out of, <laughs> you run out of rags. Like, you may see these old t-shirts and things like that. Um, you know, they start off as clothing and then you wear them and you get paint on them and eventually they become, they become rags whether you like it or not. Um, you know, whatever works. So you need to make sure that if you are using a rag that it's lint free. Um, because otherwise you'll wind up with all kinds of junk in your paint as you clean your brushes, it'll get in your brush and then it'll wind up in your paint. It's, so you do need to be thoughtful about that. Um, you can go to a, like a Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that and pick up um, painter's rags and they're going to be lint free. Um, so, I mean, you know, it really depends on, on what, what you like, what you're comfortable with. I find also that like if you have a rag, like a, a, a cloth rag, you're, you're more likely going to wind up covered in paint than somebody who's using um, paper towels. It's simply because that rag covered in paint stays on your table or in your hand or in your lap the entire duration of a painting and then is still there the next time you sit down to paint and the next time you sit down to paint and the next time, you, and right, and so every time you run the risk of grabbing some of the paint off of that thing and getting it on you. And so with a with a rag that you're throwing away, you know, paper towel, you're throwing away, 
More likely than not, the paint winds up in the trash before it winds up on you. Again, it's a little bit wasteful. Some people are not okay with that. But again, like you do what you do what fits you best. Question from Patrick. Yes. For doing our Evolve homework outside, mm -hmm. is there a temperature that is too hot for the oil paints? I am very much an outdoor person and find myself torn when it is beautiful out to be in my basement painting. No, go outside and paint. Um, bear in mind, like you should be working, you should be sitting in the shade. Um, you don't want to sit in direct sunlight. You should be sitting in the shade. Um, but other than that, no, go outside. Just remember, like, as you work, like, depending on where you are in the program, if you're working in color, then you gotta remember that, like, you have to account for how much light uh, you're dealing with outside. Um, so just bear in mind, and you'll see, like, you'll bring paintings inside and all of a sudden they're gonna feel a little bit dark. Um, so, like, you'll figure that out. But if you're working in, if you're working in um, ambient light, meaning, you know, if you're, if you're sitting in, you know, like under a canopy where there's some shadow, you should be okay. There are definitely adjustments to be made from working in a studio and working outdoors. The light is just so much more intense outside. Doesn't matter what you have in your studio. The light outside is just more intense. No man-made light bulb is gonna stand up to the sun. It's just not gonna happen.
And you can see, I mean, I'm moving through this at a pretty good clip here. Um, because the underpinnings are solid, I don't have to do a lot, which is nice. I mean, it's still work, don't get me wrong. It's, it's still, in order to pull all this together, it does require uh, care. Again, I'm just looking for highlights, not looking for anything else. I'm not looking to simply redraw what's here, but to bring out some of the bolder things. Give a little bit more dimension. Thank you.
I'm just kind of cleaning up. I, this stuff is not completely dry, and so I'm finding myself smudging just a little bit. So I took some medium on a brush, just kind of lifted some paint.
Question. Yes. Do you have a wish list of places to go in the world to paint or study some technique? I look forward to one day going to study mosaics in Ravenna, Italy, from Patrick. Um, not really. Um, I mean, there are things I want to see, but I'm not, um, I mean, for me, I, I'm inspired by everything that's, that's, you know, that's beautiful. Um, I don't have to travel halfway around the world to find beauty. Um, I am interested in seeing a lot of the art that has been made, that's kind of brought the art world to where it is, at least certain aspects of it. Um, you know, the history, it's important to know your history. Um, you know, we make art, and so where does this come from? You know, and so for me, I am, I am interested in that. But, um, no, I mean, I just, I spent my whole life kind of painting with my head down, just like, not in a negative way, but just like I go about my business. I get up in the morning, I, I do what I've got to do, and I paint. And I, I try not to be influenced by, uh, by outside ideas about how I should or shouldn't or what I should paint or, you know, like, <clears throat> years ago, I went to a, um, a gallery show in the city. It was at the, uh, the Forum Gallery. It was a show of Odd Nerdrum's work. And if you're not familiar with him, he's worth looking up. The name is Odd, O-D-D, Nerdrum, N-E-R-D-R-U-M. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, he's, um, he's widely considered one of the greatest painters of our time. Um, they say he is our generation's Rembrandt. And I, I don't disagree. I think his work is incredible. Um, but after going to a show, and this is many, many, many years ago, I was so inspired by what I was looking at. I wanted to do work more like what I was seeing um, in his show than what I was doing on my own. And so really kind of threw away a lot of what makes my work what it is to pursue painting more that way. Because I, I was so enamored with, with the quality of his work. Uh, not so much, like, you know, some people will go, go doing that because he's successful and they want to be successful, and so what do you do? You copy the successful people. I, I just, for me, I just really love the look of his work. Uh, and the subject matter leaves a little to be desired. But, um, but the quality of his work is undeniable. And so, um, for those of you who don't know him, he does paint some offensive things, but he is an incredible painter. And that's just, that's just me warning you. Um, if you don't know who he is and you go out and you look at his stuff, you're going to find some, some potentially offensive stuff there. Um, but his work is incredible. Uh, he is one of the he is one of the finest painters of our generation. Um, really, just like a dizzying skill set and a and a confidence in um, in what he does that's I mean unparalleled. Just um, so, <clears throat> but the thing is that I went and I spent time looking at his work and I really just fell in love with it. And then instead of just going back to my studio and continuing to be me. I wanted my work to look more like his. Not, and again, just because I thought the work was so beautiful and it made me feel like what I was doing, it just, my work just felt diminished when I stood in a gallery looking at his work. And all it was was that we painted differently. And that's not to say that I'm as good as he is or anything like that. I'm not making a claim like that. but. I paint the way I paint. I have my own voice. I have what comes out of me naturally, and I can fight that nature if I want, or I can embrace it, right? I have that choice. And at the time when I, was, when I, when I went and I started spending time trying to do a little bit more like what he was doing, I was no longer embracing my own voice. 
but chasing after something that I found to be really beautiful that wasn't the right fit for me, right? It's like, you know, there are things that are the right fit for us and there are things that aren't. And for me to produce work in that style, even if it eventually became mine, would have, would have always been a struggle. It, it just wasn't natural to me. The way I paint, and again, like, you know, I say, I don't have a technique. I, I just, I have, I know what I'm doing and the techniques kind of fall away and I just paint. Um, every day I come in, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do today, but I'll figure it out as I get into the painting process. Um, as long as I am painting in a way that fits me, I can do that. I can do that every day coming into a painting and never struggle. Because I'm, I'm, I'm staying within the places where the approach is natural to me. And so once you start getting out of that place, and it's not, it's not that where I'm working is safe, because as you can see, like from what I've done, none of this is safe. You know, what I'm doing, the potential for catastrophe is like in every stroke. Um, because I don't come into it with a game plan, uh, or at least not a very solid one. I know what I want. I know what I want the painting to feel like. And then I just kind of work. And whatever I have that I can throw at the painting to get the result is what I throw at the painting to get the result. I don't really worry about it beyond that. But, uh, but my point is that like traveling and going and spending time with other artists' work, just immersed in it, as nice as that sounds, I worry about that contaminating me and making me something different. Because it's, you know, again, you see something incredible. How do you not want to um, emulate it. It's hard. Like you see things that are incredible and it's like, well, you know, like I want some of that. I want to be part of that. And so I tend to stay away from that. For, I tend to stay away for that reason. I want to be, I want to make sure that I'm, that when I paint, I'm always, I'm always me. And I think that the more time you spend around other other people's art, you know, and again, like just kind of being there in awe of other people's art, the more you risk losing some of what you are. Um, and again, it's just me. I, I I just feel that way. Like I'm, I'm not easily I'm not easily swayed by stuff. But when you see, I mean, some of these old masters, like the work that they've produced, it's just. I mean, it's just dizzying how good it is. Um, and it's hard not to be blown away and to be influenced and impact and, you know, and so, again, for me, I like staying a little bit closer to home where this is concerned, uh, to not get immersed in, in what other people do. And I, like, I don't do much in the way of gallery shows. Like, I don't go to galleries very often. I'm aware of what other people are doing um, within the industry, but I, I, I find that the more time I spend around people who do great work, the harder it is to remember who I am when I stand in front of a canvas. And so for me, I don't ever want to surrender that. And so I limit the access. And that was a while that I, I made a point. I never went to a gallery show. Because I, again, I, I wanted to retain who I was while I was figuring out who I was, again, as an artist. So, and again, everybody is different. And it's funny because I'm not, um, I, I'm not easily influenced in most things. But in art, I find that I am. And I don't want to lose the thing that makes me different from all of the other artists. And I find that if I spend too much time immersed in, in the work of others, that's, that happens. And so,
You know, it's almost like if you if you're from the north here and you spend a couple of years down in the south, you'll have an accent, right? It's gonna it's gonna change it's gonna change the way you sound, whether you like it or not. You're gonna pick it up. That's the same thing with, with for me with art. So for me. I travel enough to be a spectator and nothing more. You're gonna just just quickly just dropping in this decorative element. Anthony Wychulis has just popped in. Hey Anthony, how's it going? Paintings uh, come along from that blob from the first couple of days. Pull back a little. Anthony can kind of check this out. Slowly pulling together, a little bit at a time. So hopefully, be done uh, next Wednesday. That's the goal. So this is this is. <laughs> don't judge, Anthony. Anthony blows me away with this stuff. Not even close. Um, for anybody who is not familiar with Anthony's work, um, Daniel's going to post his website so you can go and check it out. Definitely worth looking at. Um, also the Annie Academy. I don't know, Anthony, do you have, um, do you have a site for yourself and one for the Academy? In fact, Anthony, if you would post your site, I'd appreciate it, or sites. But Anthony, Anthony is, is the greatest Trump Loy painter of our time. Um, arguably, maybe of all time. His work is absolutely incredible. If you have not had the pleasure of seeing it, Go treat yourself to it. Always nice to put somebody on the spot like that. <laughs> <coughs> Frank said Anthony's work is ridiculous. Yes, yes it is. So like all of the, all of the details that I'm faking Anthony actually paints them. Every detail. It's like insane. And again, selective. You know, he's, Anthony is not a copy machine. I'm talking about him like he's not here. Um, again, I, I just, I can't even, I don't even have the words to tell you how incredible his work is. Definitely go out and check it out. You know, it's funny, of all the artists that I talk about, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking to um, amateur artists, uh, you know, when I'm talking to students, Anthony's probably the name that comes up most often. 
um, as an example of what is possible. Because Anthony, Anthony definitely pushes these skills to the limit. Um, just a, just a dizzying skill set. Again, sorry to put you on the spot, Anthony. I think I'm going to stop there on this. I got a couple of things in here I want to drop in, and then I'm going to get into that rappel pin. I'm actually doing okay on time. Just connecting some of these. I, I don't want to leave these tassels so, so kind of vacant, the, sh the, uh, the shadows. Some of them I will, but down in here, I, I feel like I need to connect some of this. Again, I'm keeping it really lean. I'm just trying to fill the gap a little bit so that it doesn't feel so empty, but I want to make sure that the values are definitely, that they don't feel, it doesn't feel like the light and the, the shadowed areas are similar. I want to make sure that they, they read as being very different things. Let 
And again, this is very thin what I'm putting down. Just really kind of hinting at it so it doesn't feel empty. I think that's everything. I have a lapel pin to paint. I'm gonna keep this very simple. I'll build it up later on. I, I just need to get it, get the shape and the placement of it. just going around and taking edges down. 
this thing will get cleaned up um, as I as I work into it tomorrow next week. Um, I'm not trying to make it perfect right now. I'm just getting a placeholder for it. And again, that's my my base gold. All of the particulars, the sharp edges and everything, are going to go in on top. So all I need to do is get a placeholder for now. That's all it is. Um, and again, I'll build it up tomorrow. I'll do some work on it, and then next week I'll be able to glaze it. Okay. The Bible.
Can you see the transfer underneath? Some tiny little parts of it, but not, not much. The lettering, I was able to make out some of it. Um, this, there's almost nothing here. Uh, but again, you know, like at this point, this is a, it's like it's a random thing. It's, so it's, you're not looking at it this way, it's on an angle, and so it's, it's a shield of some kind of crest. And so I'm just, just trying to mimic the shapes. I can't make out what it is particularly, and so I'm not trying. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to render something. I'm not trying to render something that I can't see. Right, so what I'm trying to do is hint at it. Again, like if the painting requires this to be in full resolution, crystal clear, then the painting failed. I, I lost it somewhere. This is a decorative element. Um, and even though it, it matters to the particular Bible, a notation of what's going on here is enough for it to be successful. Doesn't have to be more than that. And, and you know, again, this is a very important lesson. You don't have to paint everything. Very often what makes a painting beautiful is what you choose to leave out. And again, not always. I mean, some there are there are paintings that, that are out there that literally have everything in them. Um, again, the artist is making decisions about that stuff, how to best portray things. But you know, you look at a guy like Sargent, uh, John Singer Sargent, and you can see, you can leave out, I would argue, a majority of the particulars and still be successful. And so a skilled artist knows which things to leave out. Right, and that's, that's where experience comes in. You're not gonna, you don't get to randomly leave things out of a painting and have it be successful. But it's like figuring out which things are necessary and which things aren't. And that's, I mean, you spent a lifetime developing that understanding. And I think, you know, no matter how good you get at it, the more you paint, the more you start, the more you'll understand, the better you'll get at it. It's not like, well, you figure it out and there's no more growth. There's always growth. There's always more to learn. There's always more just by, by virtue of painting, spending the time in front of the easel, you're going to see things you didn't see before. And when you see those things, it's going to change how you make art. It's going to change the quality of your work. Again, this is lots of little ins and outs in this, so I don't want to make it too solid. I want it to feel like a stamp. There's, there's lots of little dots of red book showing through this, um, this stamped emblem. So I want to make sure I leave it feeling that way. So I'm just kind of doodling in a lot of what's here. Don't want it to feel too solid. Just a few accents in here. I'll do more when I glaze um, and I push it back and make it darker. A little bit, a few 
few little lights on it will give it the impression of being a bit more three-dimensional, being more of, a, of um, having been stamped into the book as opposed to just being a decorative element on the surface. And I don't need a lot. Do a few highlights on the on the text, and then I just have to kind of scroll this in. Again, I'll be able to put in a drop shadow on this um, once it's dry, and that's going to make it much more three-dimensional. Just dropping in these highlights, much like I did in here. Nothing but light at the moment. That will change. going to do another two minutes to get the text on the bottom done. I can see the um, I can see the letters here.
Bailey, Bailey, come on. She's like 12 years old. I've never, she's never made this much noise ever since I, since I got her. Bailey, Bailey, come here. Come here. You about done? You about done? Okay, the dog's gone. Gone. How okay. gone? I'm mean, gonna put these letters down here. They're small enough. I want to put them in, but I am not. I'm not laboring over them, and I'm not gonna highlight them like I did this. <laughs> hey, hey. If there's more, I should be Christine said, I'd really like to hear more food analogies. The sandwich one a few parts ago was really good. Uh, you know what, I, don't, I can't drum them up on demand, but they, they do surface from time to time. Um, okay, so I'm thinking we are looking good. Wow, that vibe will really pulled together. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of, see, a lot of nothing and a little bit of something, and all of a sudden it's a, it's a solid book. So i um, just gonna basically leave it here like this. We're gonna break, we'll do 15 minutes so that I can eat, and then we'll come back and um, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna jump into, but we're gonna do something. I've got, I've got to get some things done here. So um, 15 minutes, what are we, um, seven after? So 22 after, we'll be back. Okay, see you in a little while. Okay, we're back. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on here and then I'm gonna start moving into the background actually. Um, we'll start really pushing this painting down the road. Not looking to make a drastic change in here, but I do need to add in this one sheet of paper. I need to add in some reflection in here from the white on his um, glove. So I'm working with fairly thin paint, and I'm the same stuff that I used in here. Kind of matches this darker shade. Um, put some in here. I'm gonna come up maybe. That. I've got another one back in here. And again, I'll knock that down. I've got another one in here. From the ribbon, which I have not put in yet. That should be good. I don't have to do much more. I'm gonna soften the edges a little bit. Um, that's about it. Make it sharp on one side and knock it down on the other. This one. Good. 
So that just a little bit of reflection. Again, like these things, they'll make a lot more sense when the rest of the painting is put in. When I tighten up this and I drop these um, two, um, the page holders in place. Um, wow, I can't believe it. I can't remember what that's called. Um, and when I start tightening up that spine. Again, that's not, that's not on the agenda for today. I do want to get that page in there though. So. And that page, Let's see if I can just run this from here. It's basically Right, so I'm just using the mall stick to get a clean edge. Draw a clean line. I don't, I don't want it to be sharp like this stuff. I do need it here, but I don't want it to be sharp. I don't want it distracting. It's one thing for the page to be here, kind of loose in the book, but I don't want it to become a distraction in the painting. So it's there, but it's subtle. Good. So now I'm gonna move on. Again, like, I keep saying this, but I want to kind of draw your attention again. Like, I did some work in here, but it's not finished. I did some work down in here. It's not finished. Like, all around the painting, there's a bunch of stuff that's not finished. And eventually, it's going to be a few little marks in here, but should drop shadows, which will make these things look embedded in the book. A couple of value shifts, a couple of almost lines to turn the, full, uh, the the edge of the book from the face of the book to the spine. Um, just two little squiggles down here and I've got the, I've got the, uh, the ribbons in, right? Um, a dark mark here. All of a sudden you go from the front of the book to the spine of the book. You're gonna have these hard drop-offs. And so it's literally gonna be one stroke, one stroke, one stroke, and these things are gonna start pulling together one thing after another. Like the dominoes will start falling. I'm still just lining the dominoes up. Um, as crazy as that might seem, I'm still just lining them up. And so, while I'm at that, just lining them up, I gotta put this in here. Because this is driving me crazy that it's not in here. I'm just gonna go this way. Let's just. Uh, can you find that emblem for me? I just need to get this to the chain. So, and once I, I just want to put that in. I've actually got to put something on the spine of the book. I didn't see it. Um, that's got to get added in as well. Okay. Again, I just, I don't want to leave too many things undone. still working with this paint. I may as well just get this laid in. I started to put it in before and I didn't like, it just, it, it didn't look right to me. Okay. 
like that. Drop a couple of highlights here. Uh, I'm going to get sucked down into highlights later. But anyway, so that will do for now. I'll deal with the. I'll deal with cleaning it up and making it pretty. I need the spine of this book also. If you can find it, I need a bigger version. I really can't see what's going on here. Actually, not going to that. Or I'll do it later. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. Um, and so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to start cleaning up my background. Start pushing it towards completion. So, doing a little bit of glazing now. And so I'm gonna start, I wanna turn this capital into something a bit more gold. All right, so here, you see you've got quite a bit of gold in here. This is not, actually, where does that work? Okay. Question from Trina. Yes. Who took the photo you are working from? I don't know. I don't, um, he's a professional photographer, uh, but I don't know who it is. I, I don't know his name, um, but he's a professional photographer. Um, I'm gonna step back away from this. I'm not sure if I like this. I have a feeling that I don't. Well, actually it's not as bad as it looks from up close. It kind of looks funny from up close. Um, so, so I'm just getting a little bit of extra color in here. I'm not coloring everything. That's not my intent. My intent is to get a little bit, a little bit of this gold. Just to break this up a little bit, this is very gold in the image. Um, I want to stain it a little bit so that it's, this area is not so monotonous. I've broken it up in value, but I haven't broken it up in color. And so I just want to get a little bit of this color in here, which will help. I'm not going crazy with this. I'm not trying to make this yellow. Just yellow enough that it doesn't feel like the rest of the browns. It has a little bit more character to the area. Yeah, so that looks good to me. Um, I'm gonna clean it up now that it's in. Um, I figured I'd put it in and see if it worked before I um, go and start cleaning it up and make sure it's what it needs to be.
So going back to that question about who took the photograph, um, normally I would take my own photographs. This happened to have been photographed already. It's an official photograph. So I'm, I'm working from that because he's very happy with it. Um, but normally I would do my own photography. I prefer that um, so that the image fits what I need for a painting. You know, what works as a photograph doesn't necessarily work for a painting. And um, they're not the same. What you would look for in them is different. And so normally I like to have control over that part of the process. And it really is the starting point of the painting. Um, getting that photograph done in a way that you want. And it's not so much, it's more the lighting than anything else. It's not the, it's not, it's not the quality of the photograph. This photograph is super tight. Um, it's just making sure the lighting is where I want it. And again, I don't need, I'm not looking to make sharp edges. I want to keep everything soft. Even though it went in with sharp edges, I've got to go in and kind of knock them down. Kind of spreads that yellow out a little bit. Because the painting's been sealed, I'm able to go in and wipe away if I don't like where the paint went. I can just kind of push it around until it gives me what I want. Make sure I don't have that I'm not establishing edges I don't want or necessarily like, like in some of these places I can get a haze, um, which I may not want. And again, it's just yellow kind of spilling out from one thing into another. But that looks, that looks pretty good to me. I gotta step back and look, but it adds a little bit of character. Stays out of focus, but adds some character to the area. And again, you get up close, it's, it's really kind of loose and it has to be. I can't, I can't allow these things to become crisp. I wanna keep them soft and kind of hazed out. Um, and again, as you get up close, the, the painting starts to give away that it's not very detailed, okay? So when you step back just a couple of feet, it really pulls together beautifully, becomes a three-dimensional space. Um, right, you just, get a, you just get a much nicer sense of how it feels in the whole painting. When you're looking at it by itself, it feels like it needs to be sharper edged and better highlights. And there's a whole bunch of things that could contribute to it if it had to stand on its own. Um, it doesn't have to, right? The idea of this is that it's, um, it fits into the space. So anyway, so that's done. And again, I don't want to go too crazy with these things. I don't want to, I don't want to get caught up in the nitty gritty of them. I'm trying to just maintain an impression back here still. So next thing on my list to tackle. and I want to do some work on the flag. See if we can resolve the flag. My intention is to use a fan brush. And I'm thinning down, I'm thinning down my red paints. Um, where's the 
I'm gonna put a little bit more alkyd in my paint because I remember this red when I when I did the book did not dry. So I wanna make sure I got a little bit more alkyd in the mix to make sure that it's dry um, tomorrow when I get in. Um, And again, I've, I'm using oil, but what I've done is I've added extra alkyd. Now, I just want to kind of test this and see how it looks on here. So this is not bright enough. I, I needs to be a little bit, I need a little bit more paint in the mix, I think. Something a little bit richer. I may even need to warm it up a little. So again, just, just trying to get a sense of what the marks will look like. So this, this feels a little bit better to me. It's not going to be that bold when it's all done. It's going to be knocked out a little bit. So, just kind of evening out my paint. And I'm using the fan brush because it takes away my ability to be too particular. Again, I keep going back to this thing. I don't, I don't want to be able to put in details back in here. All I want is a little bit more light on the subject. So here I just kind of, once it's in, I just kind of push it down. I'm going to be adding in, I'm going to be adding in whites as well. But I'm not sure. It's still feeling a little bit, still feeling a little bit lean to me. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get this in and then I'm going to step back and take a look at it. Because it is still feeling a little bit lean to me. Like it's not, it's not really doing enough. Um, Remember, I want to keep the flag in the background. I'm going to do this this one and see how it looks, and then I'll make a decision. I, I, this one I can't really tell. So, right, and all I'm doing is painting what's in the light. I'm not painting any of the shadows. The shadows are going to be held by what's down. So again, here we go with vacant shadows again as a as an application. And again, this is nice and thin. I can wipe it off if I don't like it. I can build it up if I want. Yeah, so. You know what? It feels a little bit lean to me, but I... Yeah, see, I'm having to make a decision about this. It feels a little bit lean to me, like there should be a little bit more, the paint should be a little bit denser. So again, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more red and get it into the mix. And again, I'm just, You know, I'm having to make a decision about this. I can't see it in total, like the whole thing at once. So I've got to make a call based on a small section as to what I'm going to do with the whole painting. Um, and so I'm just going to pull this up as well. And then take another look. I'll step back after I get this in. This looks nice and colorful. It's very pretty from, from where I am right now. I just don't know, maybe too much. <clears throat> yeah, that's definitely too much. 
So a happy medium. I think if I put this down and then I just kind of move it around, this medium down on the painting, this should take, I should be able to get some of the paint off just by doing this and just, just kind of push back into the paint. Um, and that'll, that'll take some of the sting out of it. I'll go in with a dry brush um, and take the edges down once I've got, once I've got most of this laid in. Again, when I go in with a dry brush, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lift a little bit of paint also. It's going to allow me to establish my edges a little bit better. They'll be soft, but the edges will be a little bit more established. And again, it, it's because these marks are, are very much, they're out of context in the whole painting. They're a little bit harder to read and to make sense of where, um, hold on a second, just, just trying to figure out where I am. Whereas more and more of the painting gets done, this will make more sense. Right, as I drop my lights in, like my whites, it'll start to make a little bit more sense. I'm actually feeling pretty good about that. If I need to, I can glaze it back in a subsequent pass. Um, so I'm just gonna grab a soft brush and I'm gonna start knocking down edges. And again, these edges, I want them dissolved. I don't want them, I don't want them, they're all soft, relatively speaking, and it's off in the distance, so these edges have to be broken down. They cannot be as sharp as anything up here, not even close. So, I'm just gonna work into it. You'll see I'm gonna keep cleaning my brush as I go. Just dissolve the edges and in the process it's lifting paint so it's not quite as strong and I'll go over this entire thing with a fan brush when I'm done which will lift a little bit more it'll soften the edges a little and it'll lift a little bit more of the paint and I'll, that's, that'll be my intent when I do it it won't be accidental. It'll be my intent. <clears throat> again, just watching my edges. And again, when I drop these whites in, these aren't going to seem so bright anymore. In fact, I think I'm going to do that after I get these done. I'm going to drop white in here, or at least in here, and see how it looks. I'd rather I'd rather figure it out here, and maybe have to wipe out once or twice, rather than get everything in red and then do the whites and realize that I've got I've got a problem on my hands. Again, stepping back every time now. Like, I want to make sure I'm not overshooting my mark. <clears throat> so, I'm going to get my white next. Where they are. 
couple of things. Over here? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, <clears throat> actually, no, I got them. They're here. I knew I saw them in the area. Yeah. Yeah. I got them. I knew they were around here somewhere. So um, I'm going to mix up my white. And again, obviously, it's not going to be white. I mean, white against this is really bright, even against this. But I've, so I've got to tone this down. I'm gonna gray it quite a bit. All right, so this is actually, like as a starting point, I'm actually, I've made a, a cool dark gray, which is still lighter. I mean, it's so dark on the palette. It's still lighter than, um, than this. I've gotta get a little bit of violet in there. Um, again, I'm trying to match the, I'm trying to stay in the color um, range. I don't want it to be too cool. I don't want it to be too warm. I don't want it to jump away from the background. I just want it to be in the general family. So I'm in the family now. I gotta get a little bit, now a tiny little bit lighter. All right, so that's gonna read as a, as a light. And that's about as light, relatively speaking, as the, as the new reds are. So this should be good. And again, just getting alkyd. I got a little bit of oil and I'm dropping some alkyd into it just to make sure. I want to dry tomorrow. Um, as I'm getting closer and closer to completion, I don't want to be running into areas that I have to now wait in order to work on them if I want to work on them. So, <clears throat> so here, Again, I'm just going to block this in. I just want to see how it looks. Um, I get too crazy with it. I just want to want to see how it's looking before I commit to it. get actually a little bit lighter um, as I'm looking at it it feels like it could be elevated a little bit more I just want to make a point like these look at how dark that is <laughs> look at how dark that is these whites back here look at that they're as dark as the shadows on the white shirt so just a little perspective right so 
I'm now going to get in here. I'm going to start kind of putting this stuff in. Um, so I'm feeling good about this as a shade. I'm going to have to, you know, move it around and manipulate it. Um, I'm going to stay away from the red edge. I'm going to kind of push up to the red edge and then I'll, I'll manage that. Same here, I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room. Um, and in this, it kind of comes up in here like this. This is here. So this is going to come down in here. All right, so I'm having to make sense of this blur. And again, I want to be careful I'm not looking I am not looking to get rid of this soft focus. I have to maintain it. So as I put these things in, I'm going to have to go in and, and take edges down. This is actually here. Just trying to establish something so I know where everything is. The more I can make sense of, because again, this is this flag is just a blur at the moment. Again, even though I'm establishing some sharp edges, they're not going to be sharp edges when I'm done. Get a brush to mess those edges up a little bit. Yeah, that's good. All I'm doing is kind of scrubbing with the um, with the brush. Remember that this and this are the same color. One is just lighter than the other. And remember, we've talked about these like peer relationships. If they're the same color, even if the values aren't the same, we can blend them. Even wet into dry, if I work with it, I'll be able to dissolve the edge. Right? So if the color is the same, I can dissolve the edges. If the values are the same, I'll be able to um, dissolve the edges even if the colors are off. And again, remember, this is off in the distance. It doesn't have to be tightly detailed. It doesn't even have to have the impression. In fact, it has to have the impression that it is not detailed. You're seeing like little ins and outs, little variations, but it has to feel out of focus like the rest of the like the rest of the background. I'm gonna turn the brush as I go. And again, bear in mind, like as I'm doing this, I've already got like I've got these shapes in where the kind of ripples in the in the flag are. At this point, I don't need to make perfect marks. I can move this around a little bit and make imperfect marks because the overarching placement of the values, the shapes of them are correct. The value is correct. So now I have some latitude to just knock the edges down and let them be, let them fall where they do and not sweat it too much. After I'm done, if something doesn't look right, I'll go in and clean it up. Um, but I'm not expecting that to be the case. And so I'm gonna dissolve this edge against him. Okay, I just keep pulling paint down until I, until I have the dissolved edge. Or... And I just get a little bit gentler as I work my way up. So I'm creating a bit of a fade. 
bear in mind, I can still glaze into this. I still have room to play with this. I'm trying to get this as close to finished as I, as I can, but I'm gonna be able to play, I'm gonna just deal with this edge on him, which is gonna push the flag back. And I'm getting even within here. I don't want hard edges. This is in the background. It cannot have hard edges in it. So I got one side and now I'm gonna deal with the side of the, I'm actually gonna clean this up and then I'll deal with where it bumps up against the red. Get little bits of variation. I want little ins and outs. I don't want the edges to be linear. I want them to kind of vary. Like everything else in the background is doing that. I want these highlights to do it as well. And I just keep manipulating the paint, tapping it, pushing it, pulling it, dragging it, blending it, whatever I have to do to get the paint to give me what I'm looking for. Um, so. In the places where I need a really soft edge, I just, I can try to leave what's all, what was down before that's dry as the final edge. Um, I mean, I can, that's always a go-to. If I, if I want a softer edge than I can get with this, I just go back to the original shade. And again, even though I'm working on it, I feel like it has to be, like I'm watching the edges, I can really blow these things out because again, when I step away and I'm not focused on this, I'm looking at the painting as a whole, these are not supposed to be sharp or highly contrasted or anything else. They're just, they're, they're a background, like, they're, like a hum almost, and nothing more. If they're more than that, then the, the painting is gonna lose some of its depth. So I've gotta make sure that I maintain that. trying to deal with the inner sides first. I'll deal with the edge where it bumps against the red later. That way I don't wind up dragging any red into these, into these, um, the white stripes. I'll be very careful about that if I can, because that's contamination I don't want. Um, I want to make sure that the, that the stripes feel correct color-wise. I don't want my white stripes to be pink um, because I didn't control where the paint went down. Get in here, just kind of knock this stuff. I'll soften it so I've got no edges in it. even not necessarily worried about keeping these separated. They're really not separated in the photograph. They really kind of come together, at least for some of it. So not worried about keeping them separate. Again, it's, it can be really hard when you're working on something that's meant to be out of focus. When you're painting it, hard to make it out of focus. Like your brain will tell you over and over, it needs more, it needs more. You know, our eyes don't accept that things are out of focus, they work to bring the thing into focus, and our, and our brain is what's telling them to do that, right? And so your brain, when you see something that's out of focus, is if you're able to affect the, the fact that it's out of focus and bring it into focus, your brain is gonna push you to do just that. <clears throat> Here, just 
starting by breaking, trying to break down that edge a little bit, give a little bit of a blur to it. On the edge, I'll probably get a little bit of a, a mixture of the red and the white, which is fine. I just don't want the red inside of the white stripe. On the edge is not a big deal. I'm using a very soft filbert right now. <sighs> yeah, that's looking really nice. Very, very happy with the with the value selection. Um, the edges are kind of so. I'm gonna kind of pull the red. I'm not getting enough of a transition in between. So I'm going to pull the red and the white, I'm going to overlap them, kind of zigzagging back and forth between them, forcing them, forcing them to, to marry, to grade. The density of the paint is about the same, even though the colors and values are distinctly different. The paint is very thin. So, it's playing nice enough. And again, there is a degree of contamination that I'm completely fine with because everything back in here is contaminated. But again, I don't want to, I don't want to have to go back in and fix something that is too contaminated later. I want to try to make sure that whatever contamination happens right now is controlled so that I don't have to touch this again. Any, I mean, hopefully not at all, but if I do, then it'll be a very, very small amount of work just to a note here or a note there, and I'll be done, right? zigzag and as I'm doing it I'm getting a better sense of what I need to do on these edges to get them to to, to give me what I want so I'm gonna get faster and faster as I as I work the flag um, but you can see there's actually not a lot to be done um, I've only got a little bit in here and then the field of blue uh, which I've not not quite figured out what I want to do with that yet but it's not it's not really on the schedule yet I'll probably put the stars in today and leave the rest of the blue alone. Um, and then possibly glaze in blue darker to establish the shadows. This is looking really nice. Really happy with this. And again, even this edge, this edge is acceptable as a finished edge for the painting if I decide not to glaze this later on. Do want to make sure that these things are that I'm that I'm not ignoring that edge and just saying, oh, I'll take care of it at the end when I do my um, when I when I glaze that shoulder. Should I choose not to? I want to make sure that I haven't neglected this. So I make sure it's as finished an edge as I can get. Okay, that's feeling 
good. Um, I am going to add in something else now that I that I've left out up until now. Let's see how this kind of plays. See where that tassel goes, kind of comes down in here. Michael Ray is with us. Hey, Michael, how are you? So I'm putting this in and I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it lean. I don't want it to be heavy paint. I don't, I don't need it to be these really dynamic yellows that are here. I really just want it to kind of fall in with everything else. This, what I'm putting down right now is actually our darkest shade of gold from, from the apron. Good, so that, that does the job. I don't need it to be any stronger than that. Um, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit denser. I don't want it to be nearly so see-through. Um, I'm just dragging more paint into the, into the wet stuff on my palette. And once I've got it down, then I'm just going to go in and uh, work up the edges. And again, so just a soft brush. Here's a fan brush. Really kind of work that edge. Dissolve it. And again, I'm, you know, this tassel's all over the place. I don't have to worry about it being like perfect. It just has to fall in and feel like all of the other very, very soft texture in the background. So I'm just kind of being the edge up a little bit to get it to give way feel organic. And if I can get rid of the edge entirely, I will. Um, I'll let it drop away entirely in some places um, so that all you see is the band of yellow in the middle um, between the blurred edges on either side. I'm not going to be able to blur the side with the blue nearly as much. This and this color are not that different. Um, and so, again, color to color, they're going to blend nicely. Uh, Value-wise and paint density and then wet and to dry, those things all affect it though. Um, making a little bit, uh, making, they, they make it a little bit more work to break the edge down. Um, And 
Again, so now I'm kind of grabbing from the middle and pulling out, just making sure that everything is smooth. So this edge, I don't know that I can do it with a fan brush. Um, it almost seems like a fan brush would be too aggressive. I need to soften the edge, but kind of leave it where it is. And again, I'll be glazing blue in here again um, so I'll be able to overtake some of this. Um, some of the yellow or gold is gonna spill into the blue. But when I glaze in the blue um, next week, this stuff that's kind of overlapping should disappear into it. I mean, all I'm trying to do is get rid of the sharp edge. Just don't want anything sharp back here. I'm finding I actually have to pull some of the gold over the edge of the blue to, to soften the edge. When I hit the red, it shouldn't be so bad. I should, uh, you know, we'll be dealing wet into wet, so it should blend readily. And the the gold and the um, the gold and the red, they play nicely. And I really am kind of pulling them together, overlapping them, forcing them to mix on the canvas. Again, that, that mixture makes it look like it's further away, which is what I want. I don't want this flag pulling up on us. I want it to stay back here. So um, I'm just gonna take a step back now that I've got this laid in, and I just wanna take a look at it and make sure that I'm happy. Yeah, um, I really couldn't ask for more in the way this looks. Um, very, very happy with it. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit more red in here. I feel like I'm, I just need a little bit more red up against that edge. Good, so um, I think I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do all the stars, get that out of the way. And then um, once the stars are done, then I'll roll down and I'll finish this, whatever needs to be done down on the bottom, even back in here. I'm not gonna do much back in here, this is gonna be very subtle. So um, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush for the, uh, for the stars. And I'm not doing much with them. I'm really not gonna do much with them. Um, I know that I'm gonna glaze over this again for with blue. This is actually too dense. I want just, just a hint of paint, mostly I mean, this is a really, really lean pass that I'm looking to put down. Yeah, there we go. And my stars are already here. I'm just trying to establish them a little better. Um, again, I gotta be careful about them becoming sharp. I don't want them sharp, but I need them to be recognizable as stars. I 
and I'll go back in and I'll knock down some edges after I'm done. Funny, I did one, I did a flag one time, and in the in the um, in the painting, I was actually doing stars like just drawing the drawing lines like a child would. Um, they actually worked out really well. I liked the way they looked when they were done. Um, it's possible that some of these stars might wind up being done in that way as well. And again, just like looking at the shapes, not everything actually looks like a star. Um, some of these things, they don't look like stars at all. Um, just their shapes, the way they kind of turn into the folds. So we've got to be careful about making everything a star. Not everything is going to be a star. Some of it's just going to be kind of random shapes. So I'm trying to figure out all the, the ins and outs of these folds so that I can make sense of them and not, not put marks where I don't want them. Again, if I can get the stars in, in the right places, they'll start to explain the folds in the, um, in the flag. So I've got to line things up. And again, I will soften these when I'm done. Um, and they'll probably get laid in again um, after I put the blue in. But at least this is going to, it's going to keep them in their space so I don't lose them. You know, again, you do a transfer. What's the point of doing a transfer if you just give away the transfer along the way? You want to maintain it to the degree that you can and use it to build your painting. All right, if you're going to use a transfer, Hold on to it, utilize it.
So this is all coming together nicely. When I drop in the darker blues and I can define these, flat, these stars a little better, they're gonna pop more, right? I don't have to do very much with them now, but establish them. So I just wanna make sure I've got them all in place. I know I've still got a few that are missing here. Again, just going around, making sure I've got everything, that it's all making sense. So I'm just gonna grab a big fan brush, just make sure I'm not leaving anything too hard behind. Again, I don't need these to be overly strong and I am gonna knock them back when I put in the blue field um, when I glaze that next week. So, pretty good on top. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up the bottom of the flag here, and then we'll take a look at what's going on on the other side. There's not gonna be a lot going in here. I wanna leave most of this side of the flag exactly the way it is. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna get in there and start bringing it up to look like this. Like in the photograph, this is diminished. It's not bright like this. So I do wanna maintain that.
I'm gonna let this start to drop off a little bit. I'm not gonna make it as dense. You can see I'm leaving some stuff kind of showing through. And again, I'm trying to control the dialogue. Like as I go down here, I want this to fall away. I don't want it to be as prominent as the flag up in here. And so as I'm putting this down, I'm being a little bit kind of lighter handed with it. overtaking the shadow a little bit. I'm feeling like the shadows are a little bit too gray down in here. Um, it's almost looking like a negative image. It's the reds are so colorful um, that I'm putting on. So just want to make sure that I'm not getting, that the painting's not starting to feel fractured because of it. in against the book. I'm just going to get a little bit of red up in here. I'm just going to leave all of this the way it was so that these don't compete in the space. Kind of deal with the back end of this in here, right? So this is where I'm starting to like take some of this light away. So again, I'm putting less paint down. It's just less paint on the brush, so it covers less. Um, If I can, I'm going to try to put this stuff in here so that I don't have to touch it again. Hopefully I won't have to knock it down. It'll be delicate enough. But I can just kind of just get a little bit of information in here. I don't want it to read like this. Just this little hint. And I'm, I'm basically just going to run the brush dry at this point. Um, and 
this gives just a little bit of character and a little bit more light back in here and because the strokes are kind of really loose and just kind of tapped in it doesn't it's not going to feel quite as solid as these things that are a little bit more rendered This one is really well lit, so I am going to open this one up just a little bit, get it a little bit richer, bend this up in here. for the red so I'm just going to go in and knock edges down. I'm going to use the fan brush to knock some of these edges down um, just so that the paint I'm, I'm breaking the edges up and adding paint all at the same time particularly these back in here these I'm going to come in with a softer brush um, but if I can break these up a little bit using the fan brush I think it's going to give me a nice effect Again, still doing everything I can to avoid sh sharp lines. And again, it's, it's always difficult when you're working on something that's not supposed to be in focus. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it, it's really, um, it can be dizzying sometimes. So I'm just going to pull this so I can step back and take a look and see how those reds are playing in. Okay. So I'm going to grab a soft brush now. I'm just going to knock these edges down. I just want to make sure that they are soft enough out here. I, I haven't fully figured out how I'm going to take care of this edge when the painting is finished. And so I do not want to have an edge here that becomes problematic later on. So just kind of, so the idea of just going in and doing with the fan brush just kind of got wiped away. Don't want to take any chances with it that I'll leave an unwanted edge intact. So here I'm just, I'm gonna now take down this and then I'll drop in my whites. Bear in mind that after this is all done, if I decide, uh, you know, again, when I glaze and I do all these other things, which when I glaze, I'm going to put in all the darker shades that are helping to describe the folds. And if I decide that I need more 
uh, more red, for it to be bolder and have a stronger edge, I can always put it in then. Don't have to worry about it now. And again, I mean, if you walk away with nothing from this entire painting, it's that nothing has to be finished in its first pass or its second, as long as you have a plan, you kind of know where you're going with it. You don't want to just meander. I mean, people do that too, which is no good. Um, you have to have a plan to finish. But, like for me, I know I've got to glaze this, and so if I have to go in and do a little bit more red on top of this after it dries, that's really nothing. I mean, it's not overly time consuming. You know, especially, they wouldn't be anywhere near the number of marks I just did. They would be probably maybe 10%, just a few accents. Again, just making sure this falls behind the book. Don't want any of these edges to be sharp, so I'm going around and knocking them down. Good, so all I've got is some white ink to put in, and this is basically, basically done. So, just gotta figure out where the stuff goes. That's that. Again, I don't need this as bright as this, and I want it to fall away as I get closer to the book. Just let it drop in and become what's down here. That, I don't even have to do anything down here. I mean, I may put a mark or two to help it separate from the book, but I really don't have to do much. I just let this fall away. Same here. Again, like, at this point, I want to be very thoughtful about going back and picking up paint off the palette. I'm just going to let the paint drop off. Um, the more I can do that, the better. It's a matter of keeping track of where I am as I'm working. So here's this.
just trying to stay away from getting too particular. Just keep it simple. If I get too particular, it's going to force me to make more things particular. And I don't want that. I don't want to have my hand forced to put in more information that, that I intend. And again, you notice I'm stepping back more and more as I go, making sure, making sure that I'm not establishing anything I don't want. And again, I haven't put any of the darker values in. Right? The, the painting is still lacking the darker values that are going to explain the deep recesses in these folds. So I'm creating, I've got all this impression of volume, the folds and rolling, and I've not put in the one thing that actually defines them best, which is a great sign because it means when I do put them in, it's really going to push this thing over the top. So again, I'm just taking out my edges. I want to have anything here that is sharper than what's in the background. I'm really trying to maintain this as being somewhere between this and this from, from the, the, the amount of sharpness plus the values. Um, yeah. Is Michael still here? I wouldn't know. Michael, are you still uh, watching? something I wanted to show him. Um, yeah, Michael, if you're, still, if you're still watching, just jot a note so I know. Um, there was something we had been talking about um, last month when we were going over homework, and I wanted to actually show it to you here. I don't think he's here. Okay, that's okay. Not a big I mean, we, I showed it to everybody. I was just going to show him the mark, how dark these lights are against this. Just a matter of um, controlling value. This flag is, is coming to completion pretty quickly. Um, I mean, I'm just about done. It's just a matter of knocking edges down at this point. And then the last thing that'll be done when it dries is to drop in the, that glaze um, to explain these, these shadows to get in that field of stars, like the blue. And this thing is just gonna pull together it's going to become three-dimensional with just a few strokes. Not that it's not three-dimensional already, but it's going to get a lot more so. And again, constantly stepping back, making sure, making sure that everything is in place. Making sure my edges are doing what they're supposed to do as far as placing the flag in space. Not too close to him, but not too close to the back one. I want to make sure that it's that it's in between him and that wall behind him. If I let it, if I, if it's not bold enough, it'll fall away 
and feel like it'll feel like it's all the way back where the wall is. And if I make it too strong, it's going to start fighting. It's going to like be right up against him. And I don't want either of those impressions. I want there to be a little bit of breathing room. And again, just back and forth, making sure I haven't missed anything. Some of these places I have drop-offs between the red and the white, and they're kind of darkening up a little bit in the not liking them so much. So I want to get a little bit more connection. It's not really a big deal. It's, it's an aesthetics thing. I like, I just, I just don't like the way it looks. Um, from the standpoint of the painting, it actually is okay, but I prefer to have it look a little bit more seamless, a little bit more connected. Um, I don't want to have so much, I don't mind a little bit of a drop off between the white and the red. Um, but I don't want it to be, I don't want it to feel like there's lines in between. Some places it's okay, just because this the flag is stitched together. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Mm -hmm. I am happy with the way that came out. I've got one more little thing I've got to drop in here. Just gotta figure out where it goes. I thought about leaving it out. Um, there's this little bit of tasseling here. So it's here and here. And so this is the band. And then there's. Russ said, maybe it's the camera or my screen, or maybe Kevin has addressed it, but the sleeve seems to have a darker value than the other stitching. I don't see that showing up on the camera. So Russ, if you're talking about the sleeve of the jacket, um, well, it's first not. Of all, first of all, Russ, if you're talking about that, you're not paying attention to what I'm doing, right? So I'm not having a conversation about this because I haven't worked on it in three weeks and we'll be back to it till next week, right? Try to keep your focus on what I'm working on. This is where my mind is, not over here. Your mind should be over here with me. And trust me when I tell you that everything about this painting will be exactly the way it's meant to be by the time it's finished. Right, so, and that's an important thing. Like, I'm not, nothing, nothing is finished yet. Okay, so having questions about something that's completely unfinished, um, that is not, if this is unfinished and you're making judgment calls about it, 
based on how it should be when it's finished, you're kind of missing the point. And so I want you to stay focused on what I'm doing and the fact that I am allowing these things to be unfinished for quite some time intentionally. It's not an accident. Right? And it's a very big part of the lesson here. Got that. It feels, looks good. You see me when I'm doing this like I'm like, I'm just making sure that it's a clean brush, testing it against an area on the painting um, that I'll be able to wipe away if I find that it's not a clean brush. So here I'm just gonna knock these edges down. I gotta scrub pretty hard to break them down and marry them into what's here. Right, and so this is going to kind of roll. When I glaze in and I drop those shadows in there, it'll, it'll tighten up. But I didn't want to get this in. I didn't want to leave it out. I do want the edge to disappear over here. So um, I'm feeling really solid about this. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down below here a little bit. I wanna make a few marks, and then that's basically gonna be it. Um, I don't wanna leave the bottom of the plate completely untouched. So I'm gonna drop a few little things in here. Not much, I'm gonna try to keep it really simple. too crazy. I don't want this starting to look like this, but I do want them to feel connected. Um, and if there's if there's nothing connecting them, if, the, if these lights aren't it, you know, represented to some degree, run the risk of it not feeling like it's in the same space. This little bit of red in here also, when I put in the shadow on the bottom edge of the book, which you can kind of see in here, that little hit of extra light right there is gonna make the book pull away from the, um, from the flag, which is much further away. So, anyway, I'm just gonna try to knock the edges down. Do the same with this one, and then drop a little bit of white, drop the yellow tassel in. Just want to make sure that's not too much. Yeah, good. Good.
helps to push the leg forward. Again, just that little bit of contrast makes the leg pull forward just a little bit. I'm even sharpening the leg up a little bit. Slightly sharper, pulls it forward. And again, I'm just knocking down my edges. Again, just, I don't want to load this up with too much paint, just enough to establish that this and this are the same. Yeah, just knocking all of this down. I'm trying to just dissolve it. Letting these lights establish the leg, not a bad thing. Um, always nice if you can let the lights establish an edge rather than the darks. Better to put in the light and make the edge than to put in the dark of the leg to establish the edge. It just looks more natural. And again, I'm just kind of beating this up a little bit so that it doesn't, um, doesn't jump away. I want it to stay back in here. Yeah, there we go. Good, I'm gonna drop a little bit of that gold in and that'll be the end of the day.
discrepancy in my painting here. It's going to go down like this. Which means this. So, again, you know, as you're working, you find things. This comes down this way. Breaking down the um, the tassel, and again, I'm I'm a, I'm pretty aggressive in breaking it down, scrubbing it, taking out all of its edges. I don't want it to stand out. I just want it to be kind of a finished edge to the flag. Thinking, I gotta just step away and get a good look at it, but I think I am done for the day. I think I've got everything and I got the flag done, which is makes me pretty happy. Yeah, we are done for the day. Okay. Do you wanna just pull this back so people can see? Everything is it's coming together nicely. You can see, I mean, the flag has a lot of dimension in it, and I've not even really put in the thing that's going to that's gonna turn all of these folds of fabric. Um, the book, just that little bit of lettering, that little bit of lettering and its little reflective quality in here with that page makes the book feel more solid. Again, obviously, the apron, the apron's pulled together beautifully. This little bit of color helps to break that space up a little bit, make it feel a little bit more natural. Um, but everything is starting to come together. My plan for tomorrow is actually to do the metals that are on the table. So um, everything else can actually sit until next week. I, I have very little bit, I mean, it's mostly just glazing at this point. The metals need to be done. So I'm gonna do the metals and probably the edge of the table. It doesn't even look like a painting. <laughs> uh, but I'll do the metals and the edge of the table that it's sitting on. And um, and then I'll, and possibly, and actually probably, I will build in some highlights on his face tomorrow. Even if we run a little bit late, um, I need to get those in so that I can glaze. Glazing his face is gonna be done in two stages. So I've got to I've got to glaze in overarching shapes, and when that dries, then I've got to glaze in details. Um, the details are the last thing that will go in. You know, a highlight. You know, the uh, his iris in his eye, um, things like that. Um, but we're just about there. I mean, it's really. Uh, Really coming along beautifully. I'm very, again, you know, you do these paintings and it's easy. Like, you, you know, you always, it, happiness is not a matter of the result. Happiness is a matter of how hard you have to work to get the result, right? Because like everything I do looks like this. Um, any painting that I would deliver to a client looks this way, but sometimes they're hard. Sometimes they're a real fight. Things don't go the way you plan. You have to work and rework and rethink and, and retool what you're doing. And other paintings, they just kind of, 
They just kind of move along. And not that, and again, you've seen, like there have been a couple of places in here where my plan didn't work and I had to go back and do something different and then, well, that didn't work either. I'd go back and kind of retool my thinking and then go in, okay, and then that worked. And so you're gonna have paintings where everything's like that. And then you could have paintings where nothing's like that. This one, I've had a couple of places that have um, slowed me down a little bit, but I've not hit any actual speed bumps. Everything's been kind of kind of decent. Like even the face when I was working on it, uh, my initial application was not getting me where I wanted to be, and then I kind of changed what I was doing. That didn't work either. And though we had an extended day, the face was done at the end of the day, it's exactly where I wanted it. I just had to change how I was going about it. And um, it's not so easy to see where to change, it. you know, making the decision about that when you're the one painting. So easy to see it when you're standing over the artist's shoulder. Um, I think I said this very early on, like here in the school, I walk around 30 students and I'm walking behind them and I'm like a genius when I walk around here because I'm six feet away from the paintings. Like I can see everything that the students can't because they're right here. And so getting away from your work is important. Setting yourself up, get out of your chair. If you're sitting and working, get up out of your chair from time to time. You'll see like at the beginning of this, thing, of this painting, I wasn't backing up. You see me, I'm, everything I do now, I'm back and forth. I'm building, I'm, I'm basically cutting a trench on the floor. Uh, but I need to do that to be able to see what's going on here as I bring the painting towards completion. Okay, so um, does anybody have any questions? Now is a good time for them. Nicholas, if you have a question, if you want to ask that now. That was Russ. Oh, Russ, I'm sorry, Russ. If you want to ask that question now, now would be a great time. Um, now, that, now that this is out of the way, I can address whatever was going on over here. My mind is now like, I'm now thinking whole painting. Do you remember what the question was? Yeah, oh, it was a bit confusing. Uh, he said, maybe it's the cameras or my screen, or maybe Kevin has addressed it, but the sleeve seems to have a darker value than the other stitching. Maybe he's talking about the sleeve of the, the purple collar? Um, the cuff? I don't know. Though I can say, uh, uh, Russ, if you're still around, you can jump in and just let us know. Like if we're talking about sleeve to sleeve, because it could be a typo, I mean an autocorrect, this sleeve is definitely darker than this sleeve. If that's what you're talking about, yeah, this is dark. And what it is is, it's not that it's darker. It's actually the same shades, but this sh this sleeve has more. It had, everything here in the jacket is two shades. It's a darker gray and a lighter gray, and this sleeve is like seventy percent darker gray and thirty percent lighter gray. Where this is like, that's the only dark gray, and everything else is the lighter gray. And so they are actually, even though they're they're made from the same shades. They are. They have a distinctly different look to them. So he's talking about the emblem in the purple cuff. Oh, in here. So what, what's what is the question? Um, this the the cuff seems to have a darker value than the other stitchings. Yes, yes. And so what happened is th there are some really really thick areas in here. Like the stitching in here is very fine. Where in here it's it's thicker and it. it it, it's basically just bouncing a lot more light. Now, my intention is to bring this to this place. And I'll do that when I glaze. Um, these, these golds are a little over the top for me. That they, they may, they're probably, and no doubt, they're closer to the color and value in the photograph, but they lack elegance. They're kind of, uh, no offense, they're kind of gaudy. Um, the warmer colors in here are much more elegant and don't look any less gold unless they're compared to something that's a lot more gold. So if you take this gold away and you only see this, this feels gold. This makes this feel orange. But I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tint all of this gold to kind of bring it more in line with this. But yes, actually it's a good eye. This, a lot of the underpinnings, those browns that were in here, those, those golds that were in here, uh, they're showing through. Where here, I've covered a lot of it, I mean, especially in these bands, and there's a lot of that in here. But the, the, all the highlights in here are so much bigger, they're thicker, so they're taking up more space and hiding 
the darker, more um, uh, richer tan, or um, I, I, I don't know what, what uh, color that is, but it's, you know, it's, it's just a richer, darker gold. And these highlights are more kind of like, um, they're really more yellow and they're brighter. So, uh, but you're just seeing a lot more of those, those darker shades showing through. Same on the collar. There's a lot more of the darker color showing through. So, and then those darker, those darker colors, they get darker as they work down. There's a bit of a gradient from them being darkest here and getting lighter and lighter as they work their way up. And then the highlights are basically the same everywhere. So, um, but anyway, but yeah, this is definitely, this is where I want to be at the end. So when you step back, you get the feel of those rich, those rich amber colors. But when you walk up close, then you start to see all those really light kind of yellowish, um, yellowish highlights in the, in the details. So. Uh, Matthew is, guess, is asking glaze. I must have missed this term. Glaze. Okay, so a glaze, so you, you have opaque paint, and then you have transparent. They call it transparent, but it's translucent. And it's, it's kind of like if you think of syrup, uh, it's a colored syrup um, when you mix oil into it. So it comes out of the tube and it's solid. And then when you mix oil into it, it becomes completely see-through. Um, it becomes what we call a suspension. Um, and it basically opens up and disperses the pigment, allowing light to permeate it so we can see through it. And so when this is all done and it's dry, I'm going to go back into it and I'm going to cover portions of the painting in these glazes in order to establish different values, to establish some sharp edges, and to change some of the colors. I'm going to just very quickly, I'll give you an example of it. I'm going to take it off after I'm done, but I'm going to give you an example of it. So here's a, here's a translucent uh, Payne's Gray, okay? and so. If I drag it on, if I drag it on something white, it's, it you'll be able to see through it. As a glaze, I can put it down here and establish that edge of the sleeve, and I can just feather it out, and I can establish making this short, making that darker. And I am going to go in and I'm going to do that. I'm going to be doing this that actual color to the jacket to establish true black. Right, so like in here, the lapel, that now reads as black. It's not, but it reads that way uh, because the glaze is dark and it's supported by something dark underneath. But this is how I'm going to establish all the final values and colors in the painting by putting on these transparent passes and then um, Obviously, I won't leave messy edges, but, but basically putting this paint in, and um, again, and it's see-through. Like, it doesn't look see-through here, but it's really thin. Um, there's not much to it. Another question? Yes. How do you stay focused when doing the detail? What is your mindset as you are painting? Uh, my mindset is pay attention to the details. <laughs> um, no, you know what? Like, the truth is, I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I want this painting to be everything it can be. And if I can concentrate for three minutes, and then after that I can't, I won't paint. And if I concentrate for five hours, right, I'll only work as long as I can focus on what I'm doing. If I can't keep my mind clear as I'm doing this, I need to stop, right? So, but you gotta understand, like I've been doing this for 30 years. Like a five hour stint for me should be nothing. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm accustomed to clocking 12 hour days and it was never a big deal. I mean, I'm getting older, so it's not so easy. And I don't paint that often anymore because I'm busy with the schools. Um, so it takes me a little bit of time to settle in and, and get comfortable being on my feet. But look, I mean, the details, like, you know, when you think about a detail like this, what if I took this and blew it up and made it this big? It's not a detail anymore. You don't think of it that way, right? So when I'm doing the jacket, I don't think of the jacket as a detail. Paint has to go where it has to go, the right value, the right color, and then the edges have to be married based on how they're supposed to be. Big shapes are no different than small shapes. I'm doing exactly the same thing here, only I'm going from this size to this size. So when I do that, 
I go from that brush to that brush. And it's exactly the same thing. This brush fits in here beautifully to make marks, but would make a mess here. So where this one is good for up here, this one is good for down here, or even a brush half the size, right? So a lot of the time, I'm merely changing, I'm not even changing my attitude or my thought process, I'm just changing the brush. Go into a smaller and smaller brush for smaller and smaller spaces. But this detail and these details are made up, even the lettering is made up of the same moving parts. Values, colors, and edges. There's nothing else. Big or small. We just think, so like, we don't think of this as a detail, but we think of this as a detail. But this and this are identical, just that this one is a smaller scale. Details in our mind are basically smaller scaled versions of the big shapes. And it's a good thing, it's a good thing to think that way because details become less intimidating when you see them as just scaled down versions of the bigger stuff, right? Anything else? Mm, yes, another question from Frank. Will you ever be able to do another painting without us all watching you? <laughs> yes, um, actually, I have, I have a bunch of paintings that I want to do for myself and I will eventually get around to them. Um, and it's very likely that when I do those, I'll probably set up um, like 4K video and shoot so that I've got good clean, uh, it won't be something crazy like this. Um, uh, because this, I wouldn't tackle something like this for myself. It'll be something, uh, something a lot more relaxing. Uh, you know, and it's, it's not to say, like, I love being in front of the easel, but this is not relaxing. Um, it's, it requires a lot of focus and it's repetitive. It's over and over and over. And it's the same thing. And maintaining your composure and not letting, letting your, your impulses to just kind of move through it, get the best of you and ruin your painting. It's a fight. You kind of look, you, you got to do a you know, look in the mirror before you walk in every day and say, okay, behave yourself. When you go to work, you're going to stay calm and relax. And, and um, I, for me, I want to do paintings where I don't have to do that gut check every day when I walk in. It's one thing to have an area in the painting that is a little bit of something. Like you get to fingernails. You know, you're going to have to be a little bit more thoughtful like this. But it's a very small piece of a greater painting. Sana said, this is very relaxing for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, yeah, so like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward, like I said, I should, if I've got my schedule down right, I should be done on Wednesday of next week. So I'll work tomorrow, probably a little bit of an extended day. Um, not much. I mean, this today we moved along pretty well. What I'd like to do tomorrow is finish the metals uh, or prep them so that they're ready to be glazed on uh, next week. Get the edge of the table in, which is really nothing. And then I want to drop in highlights into his face. Um, and that will basically put me where I need to be, I think, to finish the painting next week. Now, if I get the highlights in his face, I'll probably bring up the hair as well and put in, put in the whites in his hair. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the, the tie exactly the way it is. I was originally thinking to go in and accent a little bit, but. I actually like it. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a bit of a coarse feel to it, but it actually holds up very nice. And sometimes, sometimes just letting things that work be is the order of the day. Now I may define the bottom edge a little bit, um, but I don't think I'm going to work back into the time. I think I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Um, I think it's doing the job well, right? And you know, when you're painting. I got a little bit of gold in here that I don't want. You know, when you're painting, you don't want to spend your time moving the painting laterally, right? You always want to move it forward. After you finish doing something, the painting should be better and closer to completion. If you're making decisions along the way that only move the painting left and right instead of forward, you're spinning your wheels, right? So this works. Now, I may decide after I get everything else in that it needs a few accents on it, but at the moment, it actually does the job beautifully. It doesn't require more, 
And so why would I spend time doing more when it doesn't need it, right? Um, if I thought that a few marks in here would make it better, I'd put them in, I wouldn't hesitate. But to put marks in and wind up with a different tie that is of the same quality when it's done in the overall painting, it's kind of silly. It's a waste of time. And let me tell you, you could burn days of your life going over a painting like this, at this scale with this much going on, not moving it forward, but spend, you know, 10 hour days, weeks of 10 hour days, shifting the painting left and right without ever moving it closer to completion or making it better, but just making it different. We don't want to make it different. We want to make it better. Right now, the tie doesn't look like it needs anything. I know that a little bit of a shadow right in here, that tie is going to pop. It's really going to jump away. It's going to feel really three-dimensional. So that's just a little bit of a shadow underneath the tie helps to establish an edge. Maybe back in here the same way. Those are two tiny little marks. I'm not painting the tie. I'm accenting it with a couple of marks that definitely move it forward. That's it. But I don't want to get caught up in this. This, it reads as white. It reads as a tie. It doesn't look sloppy. Not much else to do. So, but everything is looking good at the moment. Good? Good. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Um, and uh, see you, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.